Thank you. Thank you very much, Alfredo, Felix, and Aldo, for sharing how these non-traditional uh, marketing programs have driven unprecedented growth for Dish Latino and Tecate, which is a great segue into our next session, where we'll take a look at another or some more great ideas that have proven to be effective. For the first time ever, AHA has partnered with EFI Worldwide to showcase this year's most effective Hispanic marketing campaigns. One of those, Me Tide from Procter and Gamble and, and Coneal Advertising, and Sabemos Que Te Va a Encantar from Kraft Macaroni and Cheese and CPNB. In addition, we'll feature a session with uh, a panel of past EFI judges to discuss their insights and perspectives on effectively reaching Hispanic consumers in today's marketplace. So let's see, let's start with Kraft Macaroni and Cheese. Please, a hand. Hi. Thank you for having us. Um, and it's great to be a member of the audience and also great to be here to share the work uh, that we've done in 2012. So my name is Brian Mann. I represent the brand team for Kraft Mac and Cheese. And with me is uh, the, our very talented creative director, Alvaro Ramos uh, from Crispin Porter and Boguski. So we also have uh, members of the Tapestry team here uh, in the audience, actually, uh, who are, is our media agency. And uh, we're going to take you through uh, 2012. So just to give you some context for uh, our 2012 work, in 2010, we launched our most recent campaign for general market, which was uh, You Know You Love It. And essentially, uh, what we tried to do was take a brand that was traditionally seen as children's food and broaden the appeal by letting or reminding adults know that this was a brand that they loved as a kid um, and that they could still love as adults. But obviously, as we started to see the success of our general market campaign, we also recognized that there were certain segments of the population that we were still having trouble with, and one of those uh, obviously being Hispanic. So really, um, if you look at the 10-year trends for the brand, um, we had minimal Hispanic marketing um, in the beginning of 2000, uh, started to taper off as we got to about 2006, 2007. And then as we turned off our Hispanic marketing, it really started to free fall. So not only were we not keeping up with the Hispanic population growth, but we were also really lacking in relevance among a segment of the Hispanic consumer um, or population, which was the unacculturated Hispanics. And so you really look at our general market campaign reminding adults how much they love mac and cheese as a kid. For the unacculturated Hispanic consumer, you really can't remind them of a product that they really had no connection to um, as a child. And so, you know, really you don't have enough time to talk through the, the great partnership uh, that we had between the brand team and CPMB, CPMB. but the, the research that we did, you know, was not just quantitative, um, you know, really from a marketing standpoint, a, a two-year journey of, you know, refining the marketing strategy, but also the work that we did in consumer research uh, doing qualitative and in-home research with Crispin. And that really led to some really uh, rich insights. And so, you know, understanding that for the unacculturated, those first generation um, that didn't have a history, that there was a lot of challenges to the category being, being convenient meals and specifically mac and cheese, that it was considered lazy food um, and not something that the, the consumer uh, felt comfortable serving to their family. Well, that, that was the words they used. But their kids, on the other hand, obviously, were, were acculturating a lot faster. And so they were kind of the, the brand ambassadors. And so you had this challenge of the, the, the kids kind of embracing um, new American cultures. Um, but for parents, it was a, a sp particularly moms, it felt a little bit like they were losing their identity. Um, and so we wanted to overcome that by letting them know that this wasn't just another way of losing their Hispanic culture and identity but it was a part of gaining a new one, one that helped them um, kind of keep pace with some of the, 
the, the, the fast pace of life uh, in the U.S. So with that, I'll turn it over to Alvaro. I love this. This is like the American Idol or Hispanic Idol. It's not like those little things they put on your tie. So uh, before I jump into the, the presentation, I think it's great uh, to work um, with a brief that actually has such a sharp edge that you can, you know, grab yourself to because many times and, and from a creative perspective that's uh, becoming more and more uncommon but it's especially important in Hispanic because you really need to differentiate yourself and you, you really want to do a piece of communication before Crisp and I work in the Hispanic market as well in a Hispanic agency which was a Vidal partnership and I know how important that is and how hard it is to find that edge so this brief was exactly that so after uh, I'm coming back to the presentation so uh, we came up with this, uh, uh, you know you're gonna love it, which was exactly that, is uh, talking to that uh, portion of people that uh, were completely disconnected from um, uh, the brand and that didn't had any emotional connection with it, which were the parents. And um, that's how uh, it came to life. So just to uh, talk a little bit about the activations. Um, so in order to really establish our message, uh, we needed to find you know, effective and efficient uh, media to uh, be able to you know, punch above the weight um, and you know, attack uh, and be con uh, impactful with considering the, um, the, the, the competition and considering our, 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 our budget. So in order to reestablish the brand, uh, we focus on big awareness vehicles. We use uh, customized TV commercials uh, nationwide. Uh, we had one 30 second commercial, two 15 second commercials. We also had other, other properties like um, online video properties such as the uh, 4th of July um, sponsorship. And we also have had uh, other grassroots events that we took advantage from like the uh, McEntee's uh, Family Festival and other local events. Uh, also to drive a little bit more credibility to the brand we used um, uh, radio and we partnership with uh, local uh, radio stations and some uh, endor endorsements Sorry, from, from uh, local DJs as well. So radio really did a lot of, of, of that, uh, you know, heavy lifting on the credibility side, which is, you know, we're talking about, uh, I think, effectiveness. That's why we're here. So that really made um, the heavy lifting on that, on that end. So, and, and last but not least, uh, obviously, in order to, to um, um, fuel the conversation um, digitally and, you know, in social media, we use se uh, different uh, channels such as mobile. Mobile is, I mean, we've been uh, listening all day about the importance of mobile and how um, over-index uh, the Hispanics are, you know, in terms of penetration, how they use smartphones, and we all have smartphones nowadays, so it was a no-brainer to use, you know, banners and other uh, tools that were uh, given by this amazing device that we all consider a given today. So after this, um, I'm going to show you a couple of commercials. So as I said before, there was a 30-second uh, commercial that was called Unspoken Agreement, and there was another uh, two 15-second commercials that uh, play over the same idea of, you know, in a very tongue-in-cheek um, um, tone, uh, but always reminding people that uh, it's all right to eat Kraft mac and cheese. It's only going to make you happier and not less Latino. So, you know, put down your boundaries and enjoy. Hope you like it. Mi mamá no lo sabe, pero para hacerla feliz trato de actuar más latino. Mi hijo no lo sabe, pero para hacerlo feliz trato de actuar más americana. Hi, hi. Por eso le preparo Kraft Mac and Cheese. Por eso pido una comida latina con mi Mac and Cheese. Y creo que está funcionando. Creo que está funcionando. Delicioso y cremoso Kraft Macaroni and Cheese. Sabemos que te va a encantar. Mi papá piensa que comer Kraft Mac and Cheese nos hace menos latinos. Veamos. Salsa. No pasa nada. Comer Kraft Mac and Cheese nos hace más americanos. A virtin in the hand is worth two in the bush. Veamos. A virtin the hand is worth two. Ningún cambio, señores.
So that uh, showed pretty effective on TV. Um, the radio would try to portray the worst nightmare that any you know uh, Hispanic would 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 have to go through. That was basically uh, taking you know icons of very very well known uh, songs, such as you know maybe a little bit of cliche, but in this case the cliche worked really well for what we wanted because it made it, it made it completely ubiquitous that people would understand. And uh, we we chose you know Cielito Lindo and or other songs like this, and we just made a totally American version, which uh, sounded pretty horrible. And I think I'm, I'm just gonna play it so you guys have a, a, little, a little fun with it. Sound, please. Out there in the big ranch, out there where I used to live, There was a rancher girl that Kabali used to say to me, that Kabali used to say to me, I'm gonna make your underwear like the rancher used to wear it. I will start making them in wool and I will feel. Esto nunca le va a pasar a una clásica canción latina, como tampoco te pasará a ti solo por comer mac and cheese. Agrégale un toque delicioso y cremoso a tu sabor latino. Nosotros creemos que era tu plato más rico y a ti más feliz. Craft mac and cheese. Sabemos que te va a encantar. So yeah, that was our personal murdering of uh, Mexican music. Sorry for that. It turned to be very effective. So, um... On the online space, uh, we really wanted, you know, to uh, keep on attacking that uh, belief that this uh, could make you less Latino, which uh, was completely unfunded. And uh, we just tried to keep on building on the fact that it will only make you happier and not less Latino. So all the, the banners, as, we, as I said before, we also had a lot of media buy in mobile, and we were trying to, you know, uh, get to people uh, to go to the website and learn more about the products and learn more about the recipes and learn more about all these things, you know, that are the fundaments of engagement nowadays. So it, it, it turned out pretty well. And I think it's another leg of this campaign that um, uh, contributed to the fact that we're today here on stage showing these to you guys. Uh, more headlines. El sueño americano tiene su lado calentito y delicioso. Um, I'm going to this. This is very marketing. I cannot talk about this. Thank you, Alvaro. Yeah. So in terms of performance, um, you know, I w we went out obviously with the goal of gaining penetration with unacculturated Hispanics, and with all the results that we've seen so far, we've accomplished that. Um, in terms of good enough, we wouldn't say that, but definitely um, great results, better than expected, uh, and ones that kind of give us the confidence that we're on the right track. Um, and kind of set the stage for looking at uh, our Hispanic marketing, not in a, a one-year isolation, um, but, you know, really a three- to five-year plan or strategy for our overall general market or total brand growth. So, yeah. I just wanted to add a little bit of an appendix here. Um, and it's, this is not because you're the client and I'm representing the agency, but it's, it's very hard to find clients that actually um, you know, um, are willing to do advertising that doesn't speak to audiences like, I don't know, brain uh, empty heads or, you know, like it, 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 there's a sense of humor that many clients don't buy. And I don't know if because they simplify or they want to, you know, believe that the heads of the audience that uh, to which we're addressing these messages are very flat, which they're not. And I think there is there is room for, for this kind of humor and there's room for even going further. And like we saw with Tecate and, and stuff like that. So it's there is room to be way more, way uh, smarter and way, you know, go push a little bit more the envelope. And it's because of clients like this, because we also have other clients that don't do that, uh, that I'm not going to mention, of course. But uh, it, this is the case of one that does, and I big fan. And it helps to have a partner that does great work and obviously uh, leads to great business results. So thanks.
And now, what? there you are. <laughs> You're trying to trick me here at the end of the day. This one. I like this one. Good afternoon, everyone. I think we're the last presenters between us and drinks, so we'll try to keep this snappy and entertaining. Um, my name is Raquel Roses, and I'm the North America Tide Brand Manager at Procter & Gamble. And this lovely lady here standing next to me is Bay Del Almo, and she is the Client Services Director for us at Connell's. We are honored and humbled to be here with you today, and we are very excited to present our little case study um, called My Tide. So let's get to it. Um, I don't know if Felix is still here. I thought about redoing the, uh, the beer survey, but I thought if I did that for laundry, I probably wouldn't get the 100% penetration that he got. So the reality is if you love it or hate it, it doesn't matter. At some point in our lives, all of us have to do laundry. And our industries uh, estimate that on average, Americans do somewhere between 700 to 900 millions of loads of laundry every single week. And if you think about that, the majority of the, those loads probably get done on a Sunday. So as I look out in this crowd, I'm thinking that a lot of you may have been doing laundry yesterday, getting ready for today's big conference. And I hope a lot of those loads were washed in Tide. The reality is that Tide has been doing laundry since 1946. And over decades of innovation, whether it's surfactant or enzymes or moving the market from powders to liquids to unit dose, we have been doing American's laundry for over 50 years. Um, and we have been the number one brand since then. And that's true for both general market and Hispanics. But as I think back to the conversations back in 2010 when we were working with Keneal, we were definitely in a position where our shared leadership was being challenged. And that was for two reasons. I think I need to click now. Oh, here we go. Thank you. Um, two reasons were facing us at that time. The first I think a lot of people talked about today was the economy. And the lessons that we learned in 2008 and 2009 basically emerged a new consumer who was very value-oriented. And that was definitely true in our Hispanic market. And that was a huge challenge, challenge for us on Tide because on every, any given day when you go to the grocery store, Tide is on average one and a half to two times the average price of a detergent in the market. So very premium price band in our category, competing in a market where the economy was very slow growing. The second key thing facing us at that time was, and a lot of people talk about this today as well, was that our consumer demographic had changed. And I'm going to read a quick um, snippet from an article that I read at that time that kind of made my heart stop for a second. Um, this was posted in US to, USA Today, and the headline read, Census tracks 20 years of sweeping change. Today, the US is older, more Hispanic, less wedded to marriage and traditional families, less enamored with kids, more embracing of same-sex couples, more cognizant of multiracial identities, more suburban, less rural, and leaning more to the South and the West. Whew. When you look at that as a marketer who is working very hard to make sure that every single one of your dollars is spent as efficiently as possible, it's a little bit breathtaking to think about how am I going to be broadly appealing as a brand and still be effective and efficient. And, and then if you do the double click on Hispanics, you see another nuance up here, and we talked a lot about that today as well. There's different rates of acculturation, different type of Hispanics, it's not just all Mexicans, we all don't eat rice and beans, right? There's a lot of nuances um, within that demographic as well. And all of that had to be taken into consideration. So the last thing that we were facing at that time was what we like to call the sea of orange. A lot of complexity in our brand. And if you've ever gone to the shelf, you may have faced that. It's like, wow, I didn't know there were so many different types of Tide available to me. And there was a lot of work to be done to help clarify our offerings to our consumers. So with that, the challenge that we gave um, to our partners here was we needed to refresh our approach to marketing Tide. The first and most important thing that we challenge these guys is we need to make sure that the brand is engaging and is broadly relevant to all of our demographics, but especially to our Hispanic consumers. The second thing is we want to make sure that we warmed up the brand a little bit and made it more about the heart as much as it was already about the head. 
And last and foremost, we obviously made, we need to make a compelling reason for her to choose Tide. So with that, I'll hand it over to Bay. Oh, one more thing. Oh, there you are. Thank you. Um, key objectives, obviously, were to regain share growth for Tide. We were targeting at least the 103 index on share. And then the second is just increasing awareness of all those key variants that I talked about in the market. Cool. So um, basically, we knew, well, what a big challenge, right? So um, we knew that the idea couldn't just talk about the product benefit or just couldn't basically talk about the value of Tide or, oh, a simply value idea. It just could, that, that, is, that wasn't going to cut it. So we knew that the idea needed to do more. It needed to make Tide meaningful in people's lives. And in order for us to do it in the Hispanic market, first and foremost, it needed to be rooted in Hispanic insight, as we all know. But most importantly, it needed to be real, unstereotypical. It needed to be stories of consumers that people could really see themselves into rather than necessarily a brand talking to the consumer. We also needed to personalize a little bit those products and really showcase to um, let people showcase why a given tide is theirs and, and you know build upon that, take that benefit a little bit further than just I need it for taking stains out or I need it for clean clothes. I need it because it's going to do something for me that is meaningful, that is important. So the idea was simple. There's a tide that's perfect for me and my family. Might seem simple, but it actually speaks very differently to the way tide used to speak before. Um, in this case, we're given the consumer the voice, and the, the consumer will, tip, will be front and center in every single execution within this campaign. Um, it's also what is perfect for me, not only because it's perfect for a given benefit, but it's perfect because it fits my needs. It fits specific needs of my family. So actually, with no further ado, I think we're going to pass it on to the work. And then later, we're going to recap um, to share with you a little bit those insights that inspired all these stories that you're going to see now. Um, and then after that, we're going to see results. Además de cuidar la ropa, yo cuido las tradiciones. Mira, esa guayabera era de Don Luis. Ahora le estoy usando el Luis, pero algún día va a ser de Luisito. Yo no la lavo con tal. Ese es mi tal. ¿Cuál es el tuyo? Después de 10 años, sigue revisando que mi trabajo esté bien hecho. Por eso mi Tide es Tide con blanqueador, porque mantiene mis blancos radiantes y a prueba de suegras. ¿Suegra? ¿Chaparra? Ese es mi Tide. ¿Cuál es el tuyo? Ahora le dio por usar Hades. Buenísimo. Ok, no entiendo nada. Yo lavo todo con Tide con febril, para que sus Hades huelan frescos. Buenísimo. Hades. Es mi tide. ¿Cuál es el tuyo? Claro, ¿no? Confesar algo. La mitad de estos hoodies son míos. Son de mi novio, Mike. A Mike le gusta mucho cómo huele mi ropa. Entonces agarro todos sus hoodies y me los traigo a casa si los lava mamá. Igual el otro día me pidió que le lave estos. Parece que se está pasando, Mike. Con Tide, además de cuidar la ropa, yo cuido las tradiciones. Mira, esa guayabera era de Don Luis. Ahora le estoy usando Luis, pero algún día va a ser de Luisito. Y eso también, papo. Esa, yo no la lavo con Tide. Ese es mi Tide. ¿Cuál es el tuyo? No uso ese Tide. Sí, pero uso el Tide con febris. Me encanta como huevo. Ahora le dio por usar Hades. Juris. Ok, no entiendo nada. Pero yo le lavo todo con Tide con Febris para que sus Hades huelan frescos. Juris. ¿Quieres lavarlos vos? Hades. Ese es mi Tide. ¿Cuál es el tuyo? Che, vos no usás Tide, ¿no? Sí. Uso otro. Tide con blanqueador. Ah, por eso no te salió la que... No bueno, lo digo porque como usas otro producto, digo con buena onda. De verdad no te vi en Hollywood. Ah. 
variety of ties. The variety of Hispanic. Accent. It has been We need, we need audio. And most important. Okay. So, so actually just to recap, since you guys couldn't hear, <laughs> um, one of the, the ways our creative team brought to life the idea, the authenticity of of folks talking about was their tide and, and why is that tide so meaningful to them, um, we wanted to make sure that it was authentic as possible. So as you can, as you probably noticed, all Spanish speakers here notice a different accent. So it was no more the typical neutral accent for every single spot, but we feature a Mexican family, Cuban and Argentinian, um, also with their own lingos that characterize their, you know, their, um, their country of origin, just to make it even more authentic, because that's how we live our lives. We don't live our, our lives in neutral Spanish. It doesn't happen that way. Um, so um, that was the first time that Ty did something like that, and actually um, we keep on mo uh, moving forward with that approach just to make sure that we build an authenticity. Um, so if we can go back to the slides. Hi. Okay, so just quickly wanted to recap of the stories that, in, basically the insights that inspired these stories. Um, just to make, we wanted to make sure that we're rooted in Hispanic insights. So you saw the college mom that, you know, does the laundry for the daughter, even though she's in college, she'll come back during the weekends because she wants to keep the daughter closer to her. Um, we all probably had, you know, if you're Hispanic, you probably went through that when you were in college. Um, your mother, the mother-in-law that has very high expectations of the, the woman that marries her husband, um, I mean her son. And then uh, the Guayabera spot, which is, you know, truly speaks about keeping traditions alive and, you know, Thai being really front and center in helping, keeping that Guayabera for generation to generation up to date. And now, just quickly, the results. Next slide, please. Oh, thank you. <laughs> So the results obviously speak for themselves. I mean, the numbers are super strong, and you can see we got very precise with the decimal point there of a 105.6. Um, we had the highest recall and brand awareness across all of our campaigns, so across general market, general market Hispanic, our Hispanic advertising went through the roof. And we actually grew our equity, and just so you know, Tide already had the highest rec equity in the industry. So we grew at another 58 points just in the first six months of this campaign launch. So fantastic results. We never see equity scores that go that high that quickly. Um, but more than that, we've seen a lot of social engagement um, with all the work that we've done as well. And I mean, every time the work comes to the table, it just cracks a smile, you know? And you get that feeling in your gut where you're like, that's it. That's, that's an insight. And I think that's a testament to the root of this campaign is it starts with an insight and then it's a brought to life through these authentic stories that these guys have done such fantastic work on. So we wanted to end with one more spot that reflects more of our recent work. I won't give away too many details because maybe some of you have seen it and if you haven't, I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. But it's the next evolution of Me Tide. Um, so it's like Me Tide 2.0, if you will. Um, and I. I personally can identify with the young woman in this spot, so I hope you like it. Para mis blancos solo uso el detergente Tide Vivid y el Boost. Tradúcele. Oh, uh, she only uses Tide Vivid detergent plus Boost for her whites. Now, up until a week ago, she used chlorine bleach. Porque a mí me gusta solo usar los productos más modernos. Yeah, because before it was salt, lemon, milk. Y me deja los blancos viéndose como nuevos, lavado tras lavado. Well, actually, that part's true. Ese es mi tai. ¿Cuál es el tuyo? Tiene el otro día me dice, Che, ¿te has puesto? ¿Qué podemos ahorrar si usamos un detergente más barato que tai? Qué mala idea. ¿Cuánto tiempo tengo que tener apretado el botón? La ropa no sale igual de limpia. Perdió. Escuchame, como, como que va a dar vuelta y después se frena y gira para el otro lado. ¡Es normal! Ahora a Papito le toca lavar toda la ropa todo el mes. Con Tide, obvio. ¡Se mueve, se mueve! ¡Se mueve todo! Ese es mi Tide. 
¿Cuál es el tuyo? I think that was the modern man that Felix was talking about. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Actually, this is here's Aldo. Aldo, Aldo. We have invited a number of, um, hola, of hola, EFI judges estás? to hola, speak hola. to us today hola, hola, about hola, their experiences um, in judging oh the EFI. Oh and we have, oh, there you are. And I'd like to introduce it's Andrew Spire one. from Wing Latino, the uh, VP and uh, Managing Director. So please give a warm welcome to Andrew. Can I use these? Is that okay? All right. Everybody over there is Mike. All right. So absolutely worst slot possible. But <laughs> we're going to do what we can. And the thing is, I can't really point fingers. I'll just mention initials. It's Sir Martin Sorrell. <laughs> is why we're so late. But you know what? I thought that what he had to say was very interesting. He is my boss, after all. Um, but before, before we get going, uh, one correction. The agency is actually just called Wing. It's just Wing. It's easier. We think it makes sense. Um, but the other thing is I want to introduce everybody. And this is, this, is so, this is like, you know, it's like clockwork here. I've never met, <laughs> no, I've met three of the four people here on the stage. Um, to my immediate left is Eduardo Perez, who's the president of PM Publicidad, who has been an FE judge in the past. To his left is Enrique Marquez, SVP, Director of Strategy at Lapis, also a past judge. Further over is a Simon Elhagi. 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 Pretty Perdón. close. It's okay. Sorry. Not so nice. Sorry. <laughs> a <laughs> director of strategic planning. This is a lot of heavy hitters, smart people. Uh, at Casanova, also a past judge. And my favorite is I, I got an email with all of the names, and the one on the furthest left, it just said Marta from Alba. From Alba. <laughs> But it's Marta Insua, for those of you who don't know her. She's great. She was also a past judge of the EFIs and actually uh, uh, won an EFI this year. No? Si o no? Huh? Es así. Yeah. Que ganaste. Yeah. That's what Bravo. we did. Yeah. Uh, of course. No, bueno. Well, the rest of us didn't win. <laughs> so before we start talking, I know everybody's dozing off. So what I'd like to do is just do a little audience participation very briefly. Who here at your agency has ever entered the EFIs? Show of hands. Not bad. I mean, given that the house is half empty, that you know the percentage that raise your hand is good. But what about okay? So of those who has ever won an Effie or even honorable mention? Hey, that's pretty good. Wow. I'm not, I'm not, I didn't expect that as a percentage. I think that that was pre pretty good. So you know how hard it is to to write the cases and you know to, to make sure to believe that you've got work that has a shot at it, right? Um, and I've judged Effie's in the past, it's been a few years, but then I did it again um, this year in New York. And it's impressive, the level of quality that we do. And it raises, I mean, it's sort of the level of quality that you find in most of the cases. So my first question for the panel is not one that was on sort of the script, which is, why do we bother? Why is it important, particularly for us in this market, to enter the Effie's? Because it's a lot of damn trouble. ¿Por qué lo hacemos? Anyway, Marta, ladies because first. Because it's about time that we give uh, effectiveness award as much importance as we do to Creative Awards, and it's uh, a way of raising the standard for the industry and being at par with uh, Mexican class. Okay. And I think that, uh, I, I, go ahead, sorry. go ahead, no, please. I mean, it, it goes against the core of our business. We are in the business of persuasion, and the F is really is a salute to that persuasion ultimately. So. Sure, of course. And I, and I think that being in, a, in the Hispanic industry, you know, clients always are looking for, okay, so what's the return of investment? You know, if I go and pursue this opportunity, why? So, you know, having those results to back up, you know, the, the level and the quality of the work that you do helps a lot of saying, because creativity comes from a lot of the agencies, you know, everybody sells cre creativity and everybody says like, yeah, we're very creative, uh, but where are the results? Right. And if you don't have, you know, the cases or, you know, the, the, the what to show it up, you know, then, you know, sometimes no, you, you it helps a lot. Sí. Yeah, I would agree with, with Enrique. I mean, it allows us to quantify the work that we do somehow. And uh, those of you that work in Hispanic agencies know that we're always 
having to sell the market even today, despite the, the numbers that we've seen today and that we all are familiar with. So uh, I think it gives agencies uh, and, and Hispanic advertising in general an opportunity to quantify and show clients that, you know, it works, what we do works, and in some cases works better than what they do in the general market. Yeah. The other day I was, I was in a client meeting with my um, general market counterpart agency. I won't name names. <laughs> this time I really won't. And, and the general market agency presented a digital plan that had all this stuff and like a blog or a calendar and, you know, all very cool and sort of intent, labor intensive. And we didn't know about it until the meeting. And so we were listening. And, we're like, and we said, you know, that could, we, could do, we could replicate that for Hispanic. It would make a lot of sense. It would really work. And the, and the account person turns to me and says, well, what would the ROI be on that? To which I, being the smartest that I am, said, what's the ROI in the general market? <laughs> no había respuesta. Claro. No, para nada. O sea, suele pasar. Um, so, yeah, I, but what I was going to say is that I think that for us, the FEs are doubly important because, you know, calling a spade a spade, I think that we often you know, are still pigeonholed as being an industry that relies on misunderstood insights, sort of in quotes, um, slash cliches, you know, and a little accent and throwing a little Spanglish, you know, when you're in a presentation, and that's good enough. And we all know that that's not the case anymore. Yeah. And I think the FEs are absolutely the bar, you know, that, 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 to which we must all aspire. So I'm, I'm glad we're even here talking about it. So the first question that was suggested to me was, and, and this is really hard, and we're definitely not going to answer this comprehensively before cocktails, but how do we get from good, you know, or good enough to the kind of effective work that will win an FE? What, what happens? And, and I mean, I'm interested in this from a process perspective because of those of us that work inside agencies, we're trying to figure this out, right? Like, how do you make it happen? But also, I think, from like a case perspective because I think there's both elements. So let's, let's start at this end or, or whoever wants to jump on this. I mean, I think like any good work, I mean, uh, be it Hispanic or general market, uh, a lot of hard work, insights though mostly I think is what differentiates good work from great work, at least from what I've seen uh, in judging uh, EFIs, uh, it's insight, uh, deep insights and understanding um, the segments you're targeting. I mean, we've seen some examples here today that targeted specific sub-segments within the Hispanic market that's a big differentiator, I think, between good and great work, is, is, is work that knows who it's speaking to. Not right. just Hispanics in general, but uh, in the case of uh, well, the Tecate craft work today, for example, or Tecate. Yeah, yeah. exactly, sub-segments. I mean, Kraft knew that they were speaking to newcomers who weren't familiar with, with mac and cheese. Right. Uh, and Tecate knew they were speaking to uh, a, a segment that was beyond the yeah. newly arrived. Specificity helps. Yeah. Okay. So, Marta. Well, I think that, uh, of course, we all aim to get in through the big inside, that wonderful thing that represents our target or our sub-targets. I totally agree with that. But uh, perhaps a, a step before that, which would be to really understand what the challenge is. Of course, what do you mean? Well, I mean a lot of things with this. <laughs> Basically, we need to understand what the ch challenge is for our particular market because we are generally part of a communication platform that goes beyond Hispanic. So it's not only about the media plans that you have to match up, it's, it's about uh, one brand, one voice, but making that voice relevant and emotionally resonant with a target. There are some, some cases, and I'm sure all of us have dealt with those, where um, um, well, mac and cheese is, might be one, one example. In this case, it was very, very connected emotionally to their traditional target. There was no emotion whatsoever for Hispanic. We need to go into that little nugget after understanding what the real, real situation is, is. It's not always, always that clear yeah. and from the client yeah. side or it's not easy to to dance along the different stakeholders. I, I think that one of the big things, uh, at least for us, is how can we educate the clients? So we spend a lot of time bringing cases, you know, showing how to judge ideas, uh, bring w what's the difference between a, an insight and, and, a, and a fact. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, we all talk about insights and finding that, you know, golden nugget. But uh, I think most of the times what we're doing is we're Hispanicizing, you know, the, yes. the, the cases like, oh, because, you know, because it's this family thing. It's a family thing, and we put the family thing, you know, for everything, right? It's like, okay, you can see, you know, 
the Hispanic, uh, the, the family thing. But I think when you go to this level of execution, like for example, the, the Thai one, that it's more honest, and what is it that's really happening, you know, inside the family? It's not not just about family overall. So what happens inside the family? And, and when you help the client go, you know, and start understanding how it works and what is it that they should be looking for, I think it helps a lot to you know get to that, that level, sure. and because they feel part of the process, one, and and the other one, they know what is it that you know, should look like right. in some sort of way. And, you know, for the cases, it's, you know, I think it's a totally different uh, story, but, you know, okay. at least education for me is huge. I should have asked if there's any clients in the room, because that will help us filter what we say. <laughs> <laughs> and who's I think there's at least one, right? Yeah, yeah and who's? And, yeah. I, you know, it's a very complex question. I don't think there's a simple answer to your question. The great work happens for many reasons, but I think the fundamental two units that you need, the two components of the DNA is, you need a great clients and you need great agencies. Uh, you know, Felix was earlier, Felix from Heineken. To me, Felix, I would love to have him as a client. That's the kind of client, you know, kick-ass agencies are looking for. On the other side, we multicultural, cultural agencies, however you want to call it, we continue to be, we are miners. We are in the mining business, right? So ultimately, all of us have I the thought, same... I thought you meant in the minor leagues. I thought, sorry. The first time you said <laughs> We're in the big <laughs> league, but we are mining the human soul behavior. You know, But we're all miners. We're mining, we're mining the same field. But you look at the work of Cornel, ultimately, it's about the song. It's about this fresh way to really do great things with the, with, with the gems you find. It's about the song. It's ultimately about the creativity. But you need great, great clients. You need absolute uh, kick-ass clients that push you and allow you to go outside the boundaries, right? So yeah, I've I've always said as as a planner that it's surprising to some people to learn that being in Hispanic is actually great because you're you're constantly expected to bring culture to the table, and hmm. you and often secretly you have the edge over a client who typically isn't Hispanic. And they kind of have to take your word for it, mm -hmm. yeah. but but still, we're we're there as interpreters of culture. Whereas in the general market, yeah, of course, I mean, I worked in the general market as well, but it's a slightly different perspective. But I, I think that uh, I disagree a little bit in terms of that we are you know minority, and I think that you know that mentality hurt us a lot in terms of how the the level of the work that we can actually do, the the how we portray ourselves, you know, uh, how we portray ourselves in you know the different spots. Because we are still trying to say, hey, well, no, we're important. There's a huge opportunity here, and you know, we already passed that phase. I think you know, it's 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 a matter of you know, go out and do good advertising and, and push and push. And you know, I agree with you that you know, sometimes you know, you don't have the the ideal client, but you know, I also heard that you know, all the agencies have the clients that they deserve. Yeah. You know, so, so I, I think it's, well, it's some. yeah, exactly. Some no, I, I'm not clients. saying it's you know black and white, <laughs> but I ways. think it's it's a matter of, of you know pushing a little bit more and and, and I'm, I'm I'm just an enemy of keep you know saying oh yeah. we're the Hispanic agency yeah. and because you know that you know, for that you're gonna be uh, or deliver uh, uh, you know bad ideas or mm -hmm. less important ideas. I don't. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. I mean, I tell our people we're an advertising marketing agency. Period. We choose to focus on advertising to U.S. Hispanics. Okay. Right. Yeah, we took the Latino off. We thought that. I don't know. Yeah. We just. Yeah. yeah clients expect the same level of work that they expect right. from the general market agencies. Granted, they don't pay us as much, but you know, they, they expect uh, listen, the same level. See, of work. there are clients in the room, so we got to watch out. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, what you're saying is true. That that we it seems like we should be past the days of make you know sort of making the argument that this is a valid opportunity and the business is real and blah blah blah. For me, those days aren't over, you know, for sure, you know, and I don't think it's just me. I hope it's not just me. If it is somebody, you know, I'll look for another kind of job. But, I mean, I'd like to put Sir Martin in front of all of my clients, Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, because coming from him, it sounds different yeah. than when those exact same slides, by the way, some of which we sent him, yeah, exactly. you know, yeah. th 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 we show our clients the same slides, like, oh, terrific, you know, and then the accident helped. nothing happened. Yeah, right? Same with planning. Um, so another one of the questions that I was prompted to ask, and I promise we will not run past 559 on this, um, is 
what, actually, I want to do the second part of what we were just talking about, which is, what about the cases themselves? What about the mechanics of that? And maybe this is a little too nitty gritty for everybody here, but I mean, writing those cases is very difficult, and having judged it a few times, the range of quality is enormous. You know, yep. there are some that are brilliant, and some that you just can't even believe that this is being presented. Any, any tips, any thoughts on, yeah. Simon? Yeah. Uh, the best, uh, I've done the, the round twice, so I can, from my limited experience, I can tell you the following. The best advice for best in class practice, how to write an entry, use it if it's your, your an RFP or you're pitching a new client. Mm -hmm. And approach it from that perspective because your language will change, your narrative will be more essential, and then the link between your big idea, the inside, and how you what you did with it is going to be much clearer. Right. So your, what you said was absolutely right. There's a lot of, uh, should we say, medium to uh, you know below par entries. There's some outstanding work, but even some outstanding work where the the entry isn't given the work. Right. Poor it's presented. Due. That's so, the worst. But right. my best advice: approach the FE entry as if you're pitching to a new client. You have five minutes to convince them of your big strategic idea. Make it clear, make it simple. Don't beat around the bush. Right. Yeah. Well, I think that we, we have a case that was not portrayed here, but it's the reason why I'm here now. It was a state farm too. Uh -huh. And it had to do with this real world emotional connection with our, which for that brand, it's, it's a labor of love that we have been performing through the years and getting better and better. And uh, I would say that two things regarding FE submissions. One, don't get, don't get fooled by the fact that they are effectiveness awards. They should be don't, don't be fooled by what, sorry? By the fact that you're submitting uh, effectiveness work. Okay. They need to be entertaining. Total. They need to be a story very well told because when you are a judge, you see so many of them in so little time that you need to be caught. In yeah. it. Uh, that, is, that is key. I mean, it's not only as if it was a new business. It's a, a, it's a creative pitch. Yeah, totally. And it, it, yeah, should, it, it should engage the best talent Tanto como at the agency. Absolutely. In, in, in terms of the, the narrative, the structure of the story, and the copywriting, yeah. and the video, of course. So, how, so let, let's talk just about process. So who does all that? Like how many um, plan, you know, big agencies, some big agencies have dedicated yes. teams that do yes. nothing but write yes. submissions. I mean, I've never yes. worked at a place that big. Yes. Hi. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I've, I've heard that that's how it is, right? But, but in my yeah. little corner yeah. of the world. Great question. Yes. It, it's like, like doing another campaign. You know, yes, You know, you absolutely. really have to think about it. And, you know, my, my first piece of advice is don't try to bullshit the bullshitter. <laughs> yes. You know, you start reading, when you start judging, imagine you, you get the stack of 50 cases, so you start reading, you know, when you're on line 20, you're like, yeah, whatever, yeah, ciao. Yeah, yeah. You're no, right, yeah. you're absolutely yeah. right. And, and you start like, you know, okay, yes. so where's, Every, where's really the, you know, the, 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 the meat? sounds the same. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we all know each other, we, we yes. know the campaigns, we know, you know, the, yes. our industry very well, so... You know, the minute you start saying, oh, then, and then it was very, very difficult because they were like, yeah, whatever, yeah, ciao, yeah. <laughs> next. Yeah. And, yeah. And you're, we know you know, all the tricks. Yeah, but, exactly, but, yeah. we all know but, the tricks. Right. But I think, I think to answer your question, though, the, the, I have seen cases of, and I have samples here, you, you, the, the language changes, the tonality changes. You're right. So I think the bit, one of another, the, it is a challenge in the Hispanic reality. You know, you don't have the stuff of, you know, I've worked at Draft at CB Chicago, we used to be 1,200 people, you know. You can assign five people to do your Effie's entry. But in Hispanic shop, you know, ideally you have one voice, one person, keeper of the voice and the tonality, and That's make sure that narrative to her point is really split, uh -huh. but clear and concise. That's interesting. Well, we, we, we experimented with different processes throughout the years. And uh, I think that we are closer to what works for us now, which is really a team effort. We don't have the luxury of having dedicated people. Mm -hmm. And I understand that Martin Sorrell told us all why we don't have the luxury from 2007 on, no? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so it's the reality. But we have account services planning and creative putting together. I mean, screening the cases, deciding which ones to present, and uh, dividing, and then 
co-creating the final result, and then the copywriters and that yeah. director center. We've the, just the been team. having the interns do it, and then having reception proof it. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. You know, at least take it the first time. <laughs> it's going great. <laughs> well, one of the things that we have done at the agency <laughs> is like uh, have like a panel of judges that okay, so tell me what's your case about, and you you need to you know build a case and just tell me the story. What is this about? Ping, ping, ping. So you know we have the issue. We have you know the this this inside this idea, and it's those are the results. Right. And we started kind of like okay, watch out here. This is this doesn't make That's any sense. Idea. And so you know I, I think having a, somebody that is not involved in the case. To look from with, with fresh eyes always help sure. because you know you're so into it that you end up you know oh, believing yeah. your own bullshit, yeah, right? Absolutely. So absolutely. Uh, absolutely. I don't have any nuts and bolts uh, uh, <laughs> suggestions or, or, or advice, but I, I do have some recollection from from judging both general market and Hispanic cases, and I found a, a pretty direct correlation between great work and well presented cases. So I think. Great work requires a lot of effort, a lot of time, and a lot of thinking. Uh, I think presenting a good case to Effie, uh, an entry to Effie, requires the same yeah. uh, hard work. I, I agree, and I think that one of the things that we found is that you want to have people working on it who believe in it, like who really believe in that campaign and that set of results. It's it's hard sometimes to just bring somebody in who maybe wasn't involved and, and tell them, well, yeah, no, no, trust me, it was amazing. Yeah. And they're like, eh. no. And they start writing, and the next thing you know, it's it's not so engaging. You, you right? need fresh eyes, but you cannot really outsource it. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. I'm I was kidding about the interns. In yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's move on uh, in our remaining minutes to talk a little bit about, I remember the first time I judged the Effies, it was, um, it was sort of, I forget how they set it up, kind of regional or, I don't know, preliminaries or whatever. Um, and it was in an office park in Fort Lauderdale, and it just didn't seem so glamorous. And then I, you know, and they give you like a hundred of these cases and like a subway sandwich, and you know, you're off. <laughs> wow. And and but but I found that a the other people that were judging were really smart, interesting people, and that helped, right? And then when you get to those amazing cases, that's when it became sort of inspirational. Yeah. And uh, I feel like I learned a lot from that process. But but let's not talk about what I think I learned. Anything that you think that you've learned, aside from the specifics about Effie and Effie's, uh, having been through that process a few times, what have you learned from, from that process? Anything? Hmm. Well, yes. I, I think I said already what I learned. Okay. The, 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 enter, the narrative, the entertainment part being attention grabbing, right. and making sure that we remember that judges don't have time. They have right. to process so many things. Yeah. Yes. So fast. The, the big the big learning for me is going back to what I call the linkage. I'm pitching a new client, and you know, okay, we all know what the business challenge is, but getting that big insight and, and making it at that cross uh, and linking every everything out of it, and make sure that your whole strategy, your whole you know amplification strategy is absolutely connected to it, and because as I've, I've seen so many entries where you know, very shallow insights. I mean, big strategy, but the insight, but then the complete yeah. disconnect. So I always, when I, what I, to me is linkage and faithfulness to that linkage across mm -hmm. the amplification. Yeah. I think uh, yeah. one is realizing that everybody thinks in a similar way, you know, the way yes. that, you know, everybody starts right. building the stories and, and, you know, you suddenly after three or four cases, you're like, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. you know. Which to, which to one of the things my big boss said this morning, uh, Sir Martin, was that I thought was, you know, he doesn't care about pissing people off, right? He's like, whatever, what are you guys doing to, you know, grow your industry? What are you guys doing to, to make sure that clients care more about what you're doing? And reading a bunch of Effie cases is not particularly inspiring on that front. Exactly. Like, oh, crap. This, if we're all saying the exact same thing every time, yes. both general market and Hispanic. It's like, yeah. it all yeah. kind of sounds the same. Yes. Same, I want to add thing. on to, to what uh, he said before. I think that uh, he's, you, he's Enrique. I, Enrique. Eh, Enrique, <laughs> yes. Enrique Ernesto. And, and, Eduardo. 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 <laughs> so, e, Andrew. Simon. <laughs> they are E's. And, uh, sorry. and uh, the, um, the fact that the inside, and it all needs to be interconnected. And I understand that, but also, I understand that we put too much weight on 
the insight, and the insight, of course, needs to be there. It, it has been there, but maybe there were a number of insights throughout the creative strategic process. Uh, I, I think that in order to be a little different from, from the structure that everybody else is using, we, we should remind ourselves that the whole strategy, strategy needs to be insightful. Mm -hmm. It's not about that line. Uh -huh. It's, yeah. it's the, whole, the whole cuento sí. needs to be very insightful. Mm -hmm. exactly. yeah. The, the other piece is that, you know, you kind of feel uh, the, the personality of the agency, you know, in, on the work, you know, how they which, express. Which I think to Simone's point, that having yeah, exactly. a voice yeah. exactly. sometimes depends on having an individual. Yes. Right? And the other one is, at least you, you can see some trends, like, you know, people are doing more this, more that, you know, because you know how it works that once you find like a, a new idea, then everybody jumps into it and, right. and we start doing all the same things. Right. And so you can see, you know, different lines of work. Uh, and at least, you know, that gives you some sense of where the industry is, is right now and, right. you know, who is really uh, thinking different. Yeah, for example, this, this past time when I judged the FEs in New York, just not long ago, a few months ago, uh, so many of the results were kind of social media metrics, you exactly. know, and that was really interesting to see. Some that's all that there was, you know, and and some of them did really well with that. So, are we going to do questions, Linda? You think that's a good idea? Do we have a few minutes for that? Do people? <clears throat> are people? Is anybody awake? You know, I, I'm a little bit offended by the fact that Sir Martin assumed that by under the influence he was thinking alcohol. For me, it's about caffeine. <laughs> that's what's driving this whole thing. All right, we'll do a few questions. I just have one more for these guys, which is. Be honest, and don't tell anybody from the Effies. If you could only get one in a year, would you rather win a gold lion at Cannes or a gold Effie? Be honest. I would like both for the same case. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm honest. For the same case, both. That's okay. bulletproof. OK. Vale. Uh, I used to be on the creative side, and I crossed, crossed up the, the threshold. But to be honest, I'd, to me, a lion is more of a global competition where I really have much more, I gotta show more chutzpah and more creativity to win. So to me, I sure. would say, in all honesty, lion would be much more yeah. uh, fun. Well, it might do more for your business, maybe because it's recognized yes. globally, I don't know. Again, yeah. I wanna win lots of Effies, so if anybody is here from Effies, don't, you know, right. Right. come on. No. And, and I think that, you know, I always say you know, the, the work first uh, comes first and the results will follow. Right, and you know, if you have a gold, you know, or a can, for sure you're gonna get a lot should more be than results, yeah, right? Should yeah. you know get you know the, the results? I'd rather go to Con to pick up an award, <laughs> 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 at least for the sake of saying it's Carlton again. But uh, that's fair. You're um, dressed for it. You look, you just take the socks off and you're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. Um, I think it probably you know I think I, I think uh, uh, Con would get you more press. I don't know. I think I. I think personally for our agency, we'd rather get a, uh, rather win an Effie. Yeah, I feel the same way. And as a guy that was a planner for a long time, I, I do feel the same way. Absolutely. Um, all right, so let's do a quick, a couple of quick questions. We have 10 minutes and 42, 41 <laughs> seconds. Um, somebody leapt up when we first said questions. Alan, I'm not picking, I'm not, I can't, come on. They're all over in this part of the room. <laughs> okay, the ladies first. We can hear you. Uh, we probably have it up here. Wow, that's, that's wonderful. What does that mean? And having done commercials, industrials, and web. So you're talent like on camera talent? Yes. Wow. And so now what that propelled me to is now I'm vice president of communications for uh, a sporting company and also a NASCAR team. And I'm the face who's representing Hispanics and racing. And so it really took me far. And what I want to understand is from, and I, and I hope one of you will try to tackle it because I know sometimes they say, oh, you just had a bad agent. But that's not the case. Um, I, I really don't even know how to ask the question besides, um, can you speak on the future of regulating an ad 
and different platforms. So if you have a commercial for, oh, let's say, frosted meat on television versus the web, how does that translate when it comes to, to talent? I mean, I know you guys are the creative forces, but how is it different when you're doing Outside some kind of a branding on the web the versus TV? Mm -hmm. I yeah. hate to say this, but I'm going to say... we. Let's chat afterwards, but I think in the nine minutes we have left, that, that's a little bit outside of, of sort of the scope of what we're trying to talk about here. I hope that's, am I offensive? Is that wrong to do that? Okay, I'm sorry. But we'll, we'll talk. I can't answer your question, but we'll talk. Um, who else? Alain, now I'll pick you, because yeah, you, you are my boss. <laughs> the immediate one, you mean. Uh, no, my, my quick, it's more of a comment. So some of us were the judging of this particular category at the EFIs. Um, and it was kind of sad to see really that the only two cases that were at all interesting were the two ones that we showed today. I mean, there was really very little from the Hispanic market. And I can't believe that there aren't more great work. I mean, we've seen great work, the Tecate was, et cetera. There's lots of great work, and it just feels like we're not making a big enough effort to participate. Do, and I think, do you think that brings us down as an industry. Do you think it has anything to do with what I was saying before about kind of believing in it? Like, is it, is uh, yeah, it possible? I guess the question, the question is what is stopping us from right. having more stuff there and doing better, you know, better entries? Right. In what sense? With the exception of the wonderful people here, right? There's a very few judges who actually can, um, you know, judge a creative entry that, even though it has great subtitles, may not uh -huh. be may not be judged the same by um, I, I, English no, but only not, speaking. Not the FDs, I don't My opinion, no, but yeah, that, so two, question, two comments on that. One, it wasn't about them bringing great cases and they weren't being judged. They were not good cases. So yeah. it's not that. And second, this year the FDs actually made a reach out to a bunch of us and said yep. we want to have multicultural experts right. Right. as yes. part of the to team prevent. that's evaluating multicultural for yeah. exact yeah, reason. Yeah. So it was much better uh -huh. this year. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and I believe this gentleman had a question. Judge. question it's just a comment about uh, talking about uh, general market and minorities and uh, s uh, we have to rethink about what what is a uh, general market because actually the Hispanic market in Miami is the general market and we are the general market here as well we're going to be the general market in next uh, next uh, May uh, 2014 when we are going to be the number one majority in California so again Talking about what is the general market and where is and who is the general market in each one of the DMAs or markets is something that we have to rethink, and uh, I would like to, to have your opinion. Uh, I totally agree. Yeah, I don't, I don't know yeah, anybody who would yeah, disagree. Yeah, I totally agree. I think, so. I think the challenge is not about where the, where the market is going. The challenge is how we as an industry, as, as, as companies, can we become more efficient in selling our cases and winning, winning for our clients? That's really the challenge. Yes. Whether you're total market or you're multicultural, the challenge is the same. Yes. So. Right. Yeah. I mean, I live in Miami. I get it. You know. I, I just have a kind of a recommendation, being in planning for many years as well. Um, I think one of the challenges that comes to this type of, of entering is the fact that there's a maybe, I don't want to say lack of confidence, but just getting together a group of people to start working on it and feeling that you will be, you know, considered or you will win. Yeah. And it's a lot of effort. It's like an era RFI, yes. you know, you have to really work hard. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So having a dedicated team to do yes. this is really hard. And so I think that's one of the challenges that we as a, in the Hispanic market have to maybe address and maybe what we can do. I mean, this is something food for thought, but workshops where we can, you you have, that have had the experience for years of judging and working with the young, you know, planners that are coming about and the teams to see, you know, they have the, the desire and the ambition to do it. But I think what happens is that how do you do it? It's not easy to do. It's not, it's a structure, it's hard, you got to have the wording, you have to have like a flow and all that, you know, is really important when you come and do this so that you can win. You know? Yes, it takes a lot of effort, time, and learning. And yes, well, there, there are the EFI awards uh, seminars uh, or webinars that mm -hmm. uh, happen frequently throughout the year, the year, and we, we learn from other, mm -hmm. from former judges. We try to invest a lot of time in learning mm -hmm. how to crack the code, yeah. the changing code. Yeah. Uh, that's more challenging yet. But again, it may be, it has to do with what Alan was saying. It's just not to give an excuse, but 
we are agencies with less quantity of people. Exactly. So, I mean, it's it takes so much. It takes so so much to make it. I mean, good. And, and a quick quick solution to this would be, as, make the FEs as one of your clients and assign a team to do it. Exactly. Yeah. It's like a new there, business there's project. There's no way around it, really. And that's that. You want to honor it. You want to honor yes. your business. Yes. That's yes. the best. I mean, yeah. she's yeah. right. Good time. Take your, time. Yeah, yeah. take your time, man. but yes. it's a client. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're pitching, and you really you need to win the case. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I think oh, there's one more question. If you can, if you, if you can ask it and get an answer in three minutes and thirty five seconds, <laughs> even less time. So, hypothetical question. There's two really good cases, right? And one has a little better of an idea that makes you laugh a little more, and that, and the other one has a little more result. What wins? A little more idea, a little more result. Have a good time. <laughs> There's, no, no, it has to have both. It has to have both. Yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the yeah, count, well, one. see, yeah. I'm doing what Marta did. Okay, data, data speaks to his point that typically great ideas are giving you great results. It is ultimately, but from what I've seen, I've been doing this way, way too long, you, you, you will only win with the breakthrough great idea. Yeah. And yeah. ultimately yeah. gives you... They're linked, they're, they're one and the same. Uh, if, you, if you have the, the greatest results, but the story is not uh, enticing and the creativity is not, yeah. you're, I, you're not going to win. I, I think, think the, this, year, this year is uh, the balls of embracing the, the Latino-ness for mm -hmm. both cases. You know, the, if you think about the macaroni and cheese, you know, and the U.S. thing, and, and on and my Thai thing, you know, with the accents and, you know, be more real and, and yes, this is the way we are. It's fine. I think that, for me, is what what winning this year. Yeah, to consider both. Yeah, and I, I agree with them. I mean, uh, good good ideas and good work is going to result in, in effectiveness. Um, I mean, my, my my personal judging experience was was to focus on the effectiveness that was presented in the case. But you know, if they presented work as effective, but it was not very good work, then it, it didn't resonate. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what I will say, one, if, there are many great things about the Effies. One of them is that the judges come from all different backgrounds. So there's creative on the judging panel, there's clients, and there's planners, and then, you know, account people. There's people from all different perspectives. And when you get to the part of the process where they're having conversations about it, if, if it's not good work, now that's subjective, but if, if the group doesn't think that it's really good work, it's not going to get anywhere. At least that's what I've observed. You know? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I mean, you you got to treat it as it's the pitch and you want to win it and honor it. Give it its due attention yeah. and do a heck of a job in writing your narrative. There's yeah. no way around no, it. No other way. So there's a minute and 25 seconds left. <laughs> My gift to you. Oh, wait, I don't have a question. Is to stop talking now. Oh, I, one more question. Okay. I don't right. have a question. I just kind of have a comment really quick. Um, I work for 72 and Sunny, and we work. I work on Target specifically, who, is, if you've ever touched Target, they're hyper-focused on the Hispanic millennial. And just kind of a piece of advice that we've learned the hard way is I think a key to Effie's is forethought and making sure the right tracking is in place before the campaign launches. Because oh, sure. something that happens to us a lot is that we just launched this great bi bicultural spot for um, baby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to track it and prove its effectiveness, but the tracking wasn't in place in the beginning. Of course. And so what happens is you're trying to let like, bullshit the tracking pretty much. Yeah. And as judges, you can see Never. right through that. And Very so true. working with the Very clients true. to make sure that yeah. the right yeah. metrics yeah. are in place, you're oh, tracking sure. the things that are important to the objectives, yep. can be hyper-valuable and so, so Which valuable. is something, and that's an excellent point. And I was actually, as I was thinking about the question about the mechanics of winning a case before we mm -hmm. got up here, I thought, ooh, that's definitely one of those things you got to do. If you don't have the tracking, you're not going to get anywhere. The problem is, sometimes, in history, Hispanic, there isn't that mechanism yeah. in place. It's mm -hmm. not universal, and we can't blame everything on that. But there are times when you're like, "Oh crap, we were never tracking this." You yeah. know, so sort of yeah. There's sometimes yeah. where sometimes the clients they don't share the data, for example. That's right. problem like, too. Yeah, right. you have to be creative but, sometimes. But typically, that it is all done in a setup. I mean, strategic uh, challenge setup. If you if metrics, you know, share whatever aren't doable, don't put them in your challenge. Right, so do yeah. make it make something it that you yeah. can measure. Yeah, yeah, something you can measure. Um, so thank the four of you. Thank you all very much. Thanks a lot, yeah. and thank all of you who thank stayed. You stay. It's yeah. gratifying. I'm not humbled exactly, but I'm really glad you all stayed. Are there any? Are there any? Anything you want to tell the folks, or anything I should tell the folks? It's time to get drinks. Beyond time tomorrow. Julian Castro is going to be speaking. <laughs> this is like the tide spot. What time is on time? <laughs>
Oye, cocktail party. Ya que somos hermanos del del panel, thank you. Claro. All right. Oh, it is. Okay. And thank you to the Effies for for doing this. Yeah, thank you all very much.